Matt Boldy, Minnesota Wild, number 12. We're going to talk, Elliot, about hockey and golf with Matt Boldy. So we'll start with this one. Best thing about hockey is blank. Best thing about golf is blank. Ooh. Best thing about hockey, I'd say, is the teammates. Um, best thing about golf is you're usually doing it in the sun. I'd say, I'd say don't look those, like you have too much of a to. tan, though, Matt. Like, <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> Show you my tan line on my feet. That's that's the giveaway. <laughs> okay, just as long as that's the only tan line yeah. that we have to see. Now, you had a, a big summer golf-wise. So yeah. how did this come up for you to play in that one event? Uh, it was kind of pretty random. Um, Ryan Hartman's agent, um, he he lives up in the area that the golf tournament was in, so he kind of knew the the pro and the guys that were kind of setting it up. And they asked Ryan to play, and Ryan uh, had a wedding going on, and then uh, I think he mentioned my name, and I got asked if I wanted to play in it, and I didn't really have much going on. I thought it'd be a pretty cool experience, so I kind of just jumped on it and went and had some fun. So what what level tour was this? This was Canadian tour. Yeah, so it was the Canadian tour. Yeah. Okay. And what did you end up shooting? Uh, it wasn't too good. I shot 79 and then 80. It was... Okay. Uh, People are going to hear you say it wasn't too good, <laughs> 79, 80, and they're going to be vomiting. Like, that's that's really okay. good. I did okay. We had, we had fun. You do know that elite athletes have higher standards I, I, than, like, schleps like you and me. I you do understand that. Right? that. I do okay. understand that. So how hard was it? Like, when you played... Because there was one time I got to play a Canadian Open course right after the Canadian Open, and I realized... And I'm not a great golfer. I'm a middling golfer. But I realized that they are playing a completely different game than I play whenever I go out there. What was it like for you when you saw it? Yeah, I, uh, I haven't played in many like tournament style things, so it was, it was definitely mm -hmm. different. I think uh, nerves on the first tee were pretty, pretty crazy, just kind of stepping up to it. And there's water in front of me on the first tee, too. So I was just praying to hit it in the air, <laughs> not in the water. So it's, uh, it's definitely different when every shot kind of means something and you're not just out there kind of whacking around with your friends. It's definitely a little bit more stressful and you're, you're thinking about shots quite a bit more. You know, um, not exactly a secret that Minnesota Wild and the Dallas Stars aren't exactly the best of friends. Um, great series last season from a fan's point of view, just loved watching it. Uh, a little bit of everything. But when it comes to golf, you know, Joe Pavelski's always been considered sort of, you know, the, the Cadillac of hockey golfers. Uh, have you ever played with him? And if not, who's the best hockey player you've golfed with? Well, I've not played with him, but I've heard the same thing. I've heard he's he's quite the golfer and plays quite a bit. So um, um, I've heard a lot of guys that are really good. Um, mm -hmm. Marcus Johansson on our team's really good. Mm -hmm. um, Gus Nyquist is really good. Um, Swedes. Swedes. The Swedes are somehow yeah. uh, mm -hmm. pulling it together there, but. Other than that, I haven't played with too many guys, um, mostly just guys on, on our team. So, But those two are definitely uh, definitely up there for sure. Do the clubs ever come on a road trip? Uh, what if, would Bill Guerin do? Because Dean, <laughs> Dean Evison apparently is a heck of a golfer. Yeah. So what would those guys do if, like, say, in March or April, or let's say there's a February trip to Arizona and Vegas. Do yeah. the, what would they do if they saw the golf clubs coming out? Um, I don't know if we'd hear the end of it from Billy. That's for sure. Um, I don't know. I think Dean would, Dean would have mixed emotions cause he's such loves golf so much, mm -hmm. but, uh, no, I don't think, uh, anyone's bringing their, their clubs on, on the team plane at all. It's more, uh, if they're coming, they're getting shipped there and, and it's a secret and no one's knowing about it. So <laughs> do we just, do we just get you in trouble? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> find out yeah um, exactly uh i referenced that that minnesota dallas series which was so much fun to watch uh, from a player's point of view because we're watching this and it's like you know marathon overtime games and humongous hits and scraps and high level play from your point of view what was it like to be involved in that series take us into the take us on the rink and in the room yeah it was a it was a really good series i mean play them so much during the regular season and Kind of knew what what we were getting into. I mean, both of us kind of big, strong, heavy yep. teams that that play hard and kind of like to play that that bully style where you go in there and, and play hard and kind of 
beat beat the will out of the other teams and have two teams like that it definitely adds up quick especially mm -hmm. when when you're seeing all the hits that were happening and you know how how hard guys were playing and stuff like that so it was uh it was back and forth uh good hockey um but yeah it's just kind of one of the ones that that fell their way yourself big year 30 goal year when it was over what did garen and evison say to you um i mean honestly it's it was a good year but we, playoffs didn't go well so i mean for me that's that's more the the takeaway from last year than than anything else i mean it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season in my opinion it's can you show up and, and do it when it matters? And I think that was kind of more of the takeaway than anything else. That's one thing I remember Keith Yandel told me once, like the first time he was ever in a playoff series where a team keyed on him, he realized how difficult life really, really was. Yeah. What did you learn about that? Because they were obviously, they had a plan to stop you. Yeah, it's a different, it's a different game for sure. I mean, you know, you don't see much, much of that in the regular season, I think. Um, I mean, you get matchups and stuff like that, but it's not not to the extent that it is in playoffs. And obviously, everyone plays a certain role in playoffs. And for some some guys that they're so good defensively, it's it's stuff like that. It's it's matching up, and you know they have no desire to score a goal. It's making sure that you don't score. And so, it's it's different. It's it's a lot harder for sure. It's uh, it's something you got you got to learn learn about, learn how to play different, and, and kind of find different ways to to make a difference. Who did you hate seeing? out there who was your oh this guy again cool. on dallas because uh, elliot's like it was obvious they were like okay we got to shut boldy down honestly my i was taking face offs on the power play and playoffs because ak was uh hurt was hurt yeah. so that was kind of a new thing to me and going out there and, and seeing glenn denning and kind of their big center that they're so good on draws that was kind of a, a big chess battle throughout that whole series and yeah Obviously, it's a, it's a pretty big thing to be able to get that possession early. How different will the room be without Matt Dombey in it? Very different. I think, uh, I mean, it's it's how, how the league works. Like, everyone says it's a business. And, and obviously, it is because I don't think you can find anyone in, in our organization to say anything bad about him. Um, it'll be different. I think guys will step up, and we have an awesome room that, that sticks together. But... He's definitely a, a top of the line human being and, and had a huge impact on our team. Quieter? Uh, I don't know. I think, Pat Maroon's uh, in there. Exactly. That's true. Pat good Maroon's point. in that room now, Elliot. It's a good call. <laughs> exactly. I think uh, we got some younger guys that are starting to play a few more years now, too, who, who are opening up a little bit more and, and see a bigger role and stuff like that. So hopefully that, that kind of fills in that space. But uh, yeah, Dums was definitely a, a big part of that room. You know, Elliot mentioned the 30 goal campaign, and I don't know if you set personal targets um, at parallel with or above team targets, like going into this season, like by the end of it, what will be a successful, like how will you measure a successful season for yourself? Honestly, it's more of a kind of the team stuff for me than anything. Um, I just like to win. I mean, if I'm, if I'm playing well and scoring goals, then, then so be it. But uh I mean, I'm going out there to score goals to, to help the team win. I'm not going out there to score goals to walk around and tell everyone mm -hmm. how many goals I scored. So it's more more that aspect of can we kind of put it together and get over this little hump that we have and, and kind of keep pushing and, and do something good with this season. You know, Minnesota is a fascinating team. It doesn't get a lot of the, the headlines that I think it deserves. And we've talked about this on, on this podcast previous. You know, some really sneaky good players on this team. Elliot and I talk a lot about, Elliot's sick of hearing me talk about Jonas Brodine, I think, mm -hmm. at, at this point. But whether and you mentioned Joel Eriksson, uh, and, you know, yourself, like you probably don't get the headlines that you deserve. Who are some of the players that you think everybody misses out on? I mean, listen, Karel Kar Kar Kaprizov mm -hmm. getting headlines. Like, exactly. He, yeah. he, he, he deserves he busts it. Out and, he, and he deserves yeah. all of them. But who are we missing out on? Um, I mean, we have some some unbelievable players, but I think you look, you look at our decor to start with, with, uh, like you said, Jonas Brodini. He, he definitely does not get the, the love that he deserves. He is top of the line, top of the line human being, top of the line player. Mm -hmm. he's, he's everywhere. It seems like no one can get by him. And, it's just so easy for him. It's just another day in his life, but for everyone else watching, it's, 
Yeah, it's kind of this quite the spectacle. So, uh, I mean, guys like him, you look at different guys around the room. Joel Erickson, he's an absolute monster. I mean, everyone on the ice scores goals is our best defensive player, everything. Um, I think we have a lot of guys that, that are super good at certain things that, that go unnoticed. And and the things that they're good at are, are stuff that is not easy to be good at, too. So, I mean, you look at even guys like Marcus Foligno, I mean, he I think he scares me more than most of the other guys in the <laughs> league, just how big he is and how powerful he is and yeah. definitely has the temper. So uh, just guys like that. I mean, you look around our whole room, you could say something good about everyone. No Patrice Bergeron. So Selkie door open for Joel Erickson act. I think uh, he deserves a look, that's for sure. OK, I'm curious. What is the best piece of trash talk you received in your breakout year last year? Oh, um, I don't know. I usually stay out of it, to be honest. Um, but did someone say something to you or anything like that? Usually not much. I mean, I'm usually uh, I'm usually out of it. So uh, I feel like most guys don't really get get the chance to to say too much and pretty quiet kids. So. I usually keep my mouth shut and just just play. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Wise. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations on a great season last year. Best of luck this year. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You.